The Hollywood writers' strike is officially over. Film and TV writers can return to work today after union leaders approved a deal that includes major gains on issues that they've been fighting for. Danya Backus is in Culver City, California with the latest. Good morning. Not just because the strike is over, but because it appears on all major issues writers were fighting for, pay, working conditions, use of artificial intelligence, and more, they made major gains. What do we want? A fair contract. When do we want it? Now. For nearly five months, they walked picket lines in solidarity. Whose stories? Our stories. Some 11,000 members of the Writers Guild of America on strike as they pushed for greater pay and protections in a new three-year contract. We're out here standing with our union and for all unions. It appears to have paid off. The newly released details include minimum pay increases for every year of the contract, guaranteed staffing levels for writers' rooms, and guardrails designed to protect writers against the use of artificial intelligence. This is a phenomenal deal. Eric Haywood was on the WGA's negotiating committee and has been on the front line since May. The workers create that power. The majority of the membership is over the moon. This deal, I think, financially works out to about three times as much as our last contract. A major sticking point with the studios was the potential use of artificial intelligence in writing scripts. Every project has to have at least one or more human writers. We cannot be replaced uh, by this technology. Thank you, Prickle. How you doing? At least one talk show is set to resume production this week. From Bill Maher, my writers in real time are back. See you Friday night. But with SAG after actors still on strike, it could be months before all Hollywood production gets back to the business of show business. I hope that this inspires, you know, the studios to uh, really respond, to really hear what SAG is asking for. We've asked the Producers Alliance for its take on the new deal, but haven't heard back. We must note that the deal must still be ratified by the Guild's rank and file, but leadership expects it will be passed when members vote early next month. Vlad and Anne Marie. Danya, thank you. For more on this, we are joined by Jordan Moreau. He's an online news editor for Variety. Uh, Jordan, great to have you. Uh, so let's talk news of the day first. The Writers Union uh, officially ended their strike. Uh, so, you know, I, I think most of what people who are not in show business are talking about was there was this one line in a report that I saw this week that said that Greg Harmon is rebooting the office. <laughs> And that means that there could be a new office um, reboot coming down the pike. But, but just overall, what does this mean for writers, um, especially as we await to see what goes on with SAG-AFTRA? I mean, yeah, they can get back to work. Finally, it's been almost 150 days. Um, they've been kind of on hold this entire time. So writers' rooms can open back up. Your favorite shows um, that are kind of in the writing process can resume their work finally. Um, it is going to be a bit of a pause until SAG-AFTRA uh, negotiates their strike and their um, – finally officially done with that and then we're going to get production we're going to get filming back um your the big movies coming out next year um, are going to resume filming and hopefully not be delayed too much all right so let's get into this other bit that we've been talking about mm -hmm. throughout the morning martin scorsese award-winning uh director did an interview with gq and he spoke about the danger of comic book films he said that uh filmmakers need to quote hit them from all sides and don't give up let's see what you got Go out there and do it. Go reinvent. Don't complain about it. But it's uh, it's true because we've got to save cinema. It's like he's at war. Um, so let's talk about these comments. Vlad and I, I know, have a take on it. Vlad's a huge superhero uh, fan. But also a huge Martin Scorsese fan. Yeah, I, I, I just I'm, like good movies. He's movie. a genius. What are we to make of what he's saying? Um, I'm a big Marvel fan, too. I'm a big Scorsese fan. I saw his latest movie, and I mean, it blows any Marvel movie out of the water, to, you know, to be uh, completely honest. But he's looking for movies that push the envelope that are about drama, love, murder, deceit, betrayal. Um, he, he is a master at what he does. He's an Oscar-winning uh, director. Um, he's looking for movies that aren't franchises, that are not doing the same thing over and over and over again that aren't sequels. Um, so Marvel movies are kind of the go-to example of what that is right now. But he's looking for just new things that aren't just the same cookie-cutter format. See, right, we but, were just talking about that. And what I was going to say is I think that's what's killing cinema is this sequel, this, like, equation. Tentpole. We know it already works. And so they map out five movies ahead of time. And I think that's killing innovation. Yeah, but, but so, okay. I, and I... 
I appreciate Scorsese because, as we all have just agreed to, he is a cine- he's a genius. He's an auteur, and and I've loved everything that he's ever put on celluloid. And I know I'm going to love Killers of the Flower Moon because it's Martin Scorsese. But but you know, in the article, he says that there's a generation now that thinks that movies are only those, that they're only franchises. That's what movies are. But when you talk about sort of being out of touch with the culture, I mean, if you grow up only watching Martin Scorsese movies, you might think that there are no black actors who could be leads in his films because he rarely ever has that, right? So the notion that movies should only be one thing and it shouldn't be another, even for someone who's as great as he is, I think is sort of putting to pasture people who have other interests that perhaps don't go to the movies because they want to see some kind of deep existential crisis happening with actors Mm -hmm. on on film. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you want to be entertained by a popcorn flick. I think that's completely valid, completely fair. I love seeing the new Marvel movie, the new DC movie that's coming out. But if that's the only type of movie that we're going to see in theaters, someone in a cave fighting a bad guy, fighting a monster, losing their powers, getting it back, saving the day, it kind of gets stale after a while. So I think I think he's valid in his criticism. You know, you're allowed to not like comedies or not like certain things, Christmas movies, you know, different things. Um, and I think it's good to have variety. It's good to have variation in what we see on screen. And it's going to get more people back to theaters. And that's what we all really want, you know, to save movie theaters. The other thing I was going to say is that they're cross-generational, right? It's, yeah. a, it's a, a, among a handful of movies that I can watch with my daughter, who's only 12. Oh, good point. And we can share this experience. I'm not going to... Killers of the Flower Moon is going to be great. It's going to be awesome. I read the book, and it was mind-blowing, so I can only imagine the movie. She's not going to that. But I can't sit down and watch a superhero movie. There's a world where you can have Killers of the Flower Moon and Casino and Goodfellas and Mean Streets and Raging Bull and, you know, Ultron. Jordan Moreau, thank you very much, my friend. Appreciate it.